I want to do this post from the Passport Bro sub because it is very interesting and there are a few different implications that will be discussed here, even though it is a short passage. He says American women are actually more grounded than Indian ones. He says, I grew up in India and moved to NYC. Indian women have much higher standards and are much less attractive. Dating apps in India are full of women expecting six feet tall dudes in a country where the average male height is five foot six while being five feet themselves. Most are extremely privileged with dad footing their bill and zero pressure to work and make money. I've had girls unmatch you the instant they find out you don't own a car. In India, this is a luxury. These women have zero personality, hobbies, and have never worked for anything their entire lives and are feminists. A lot of this is due to the messed up gender ratio and way too many options, even for uggos. Don't believe me? Watch the trailer of a show called Four More Shots, Please. Trust me, y'all got it great in the USA. Women are hardworking, less family support. They work hard jobs such as retail and service jobs. They know the value of hard work, at least, as a very short five foot nine brown guy. I've had way more success in the U.S. than my country. There are so many things in this small, um, small post to unpack. First of all, the gender ratio in India. Look at this. There are over 743 million males and just under 70, I'm sorry, seven, just under 700 million females in India. That means that the male population is exceeding the women's population by 45 million, 45 million. So that means that there are what, there are so many men that will never pair up with a woman. And this is because of the highly patriarchal um, Indian society that edifies men and male babies over girl babies. So they have thoroughly screwed up the men. The Indian government, the Indian patriarchy has thoroughly screwed up Indian men. So that means that women can be more discerning. They can choose to date. They can choose not to date. And in India, these women basically become servants of their um, their spouse's family where they have to do everything. They become literal domestic servants for these families, even more so than in, here in the United States. It is wild what happens over in India where they're supposed to edify these men like demigods. And that happens here. That happens in um, America too. But India and some of these other um, countries are highly like crazy um, patriarchal and treat their women like crap. So why would a woman decide to um, even pair up? And, you know, all of this other stuff that he's talking about, I bet it's just because they are mad. They are mad that there are hardly any women, but instead of expressing it towards the powers that be that created these in imbalances, they are mad at the women for not choosing them. If you listen to what he said, he is angry. He said these women um, have way too high standards and they're not even cute. How dare they? <laughs> but why would a woman in India because we, we already discussed, she's going to basically become a domestic servant. Why would she move from her daddy's house if she is taken care of simply to become a servant to a man? This is not, these people, these men are mad at the wrong folks. More stuff comes out in the comments. Waterline says, a lot of Americans are very insular and don't realize that in many countries it's even worse than the US. Women are women everywhere and all the BS that comes with it. One thing I will say that in mainland China is an exception in that the women there are very direct with what they want and what they feel about you. Whereas just across in Hong Kong, Taiwan, I've encountered some of the worst women in my life. Indirectness, mind games, weird behaviors. As for India, I don't know at all. I'd imagine the top tier women have their pick of men and would prefer a rich Indian guy or someone of their own culture, similar to how it is in East um, Asia. Foreigners will never get the top tier women, even if they're all rich. But the thing is, I, I am guessing that if they are wanting the top tier Indian men, it's because they already know that they are about to become a domestic servant. So why would they go for a bottom tier man, especially if they are already cared for and loved? Why even move into another man's house? 
um, Nas says, if you meet women who are privileged enough to come from a wealthy family where the father pays all the bills, then it's likely they would have high expectations. Duh. How do women act that come from families where the father is too poor to spoil them? Then the OP says, the so-called modest ones prefer arranged marriage, which is just hyper, um, hypergamy on steroids. It is a pure power play on what the guy can offer and can put animals to, um, to shame. Well, I mean, duh, duh. This woman is about to become a domestic servant. So why wouldn't she play a game where she knows that she is just about to turn into a servant? Truth teller, you are mad that Indian women want guys with cars and are tall. Those standards wouldn't even work in America because you need a degree, $80,000, um, an $80,000 job and a house, etc. cetera. Sharp Ling Lingenberry says, a degree, better white collar jobs are already on my list, bro. It's way more harsh like 20 to 50 LPA jobs or more precisely 2.5 million PA jobs where the average salary of Indians is 3.3 to 8 LPA. I'm not sure what all of these letters and numbers mean. All right, Long John Vanilla, who is a white guy, says, I've been with a few Indian women. They generally seem to be more feminine, sweeter, and caring. I think the problem with Indian women is it's either hit or miss in the looks department. The attractive ones are very attractive, and the not very attractive ones are not very not attractive. There's no middle ground. And then the OP says, they treat white guys much better. And then Subtle Catastrophe says, they treat white guys as what we are, a nice opportunity for some fun in bed who doesn't know anyone in their family social circle. They are certainly ruthless in the game of romance, but that's universal among women. If a white guy really is a come up, that is a guy whose socioeconomic status is at least equal but better, yet higher than her, Indian women are more than eager to husband you up and brag about it. And then Long John Vanilla says, this one Indian girl was serving me full-blown breakfast in bed. It was mind-blowing. Not sure if this is some white European fetish Indian women have or if this is simply the way they're raised. And then the OP says, nah, dating white is a status symbol. It's a colonial hangover. I said more stuff was going to come out. And then Long John Vanilla says, so you're telling me these women treat Indian guys like shh. And the OP says, yep. But the thing is, Indian men treat the women like shh. They treat them like servants. And so obviously there is a disdain within their culture. This is important because so many of us, like Black people, we believe that there's just infighting within our communities and everybody else is amazing. No, colonialism has effed many cultures and countries up, including India, where they already have a full-blown caste system. Colorism is um, um, high. Sexism between um, sexes is high. And um, inequality is certainly there, is baked into the cake of their country. And so the men covet white women, the women covet other people other than their own men. So I just wanted y'all to see this because I think that it has a whole lot of implication. And these countries that did this whole, you know, edifying the male children over the girl children, they are really screwed up right now. These imbalances are creating such a jacked up space for the men to be in. But the thing is, they are mad at the women for not choosing them, even though their countries are highly patriarchal and have pushed women so far down that the women are just like, mm, I'd rather not, especially if they have the finances to be able to support themselves. Let me know what you think about this on Jump in the Comments, like, comment, share. Okay, so I was tagged in this post in the relationship advice subreddit. She's 29, he's 31. She says, I'm pregnant from my husband and our baby has a con congenital disease. He is pro-life and I am pro-choice. Can I make him change his point of view? She says, we are married for three years and known each other for 10 plus years and always wanted kids. We were over the moon when we found out I was pregnant. Our baby was diagnosed with a cardiac defect that will require several open heart surgeries. We are now waiting for the genetic test result. He has made it clear that he wants to have the baby no matter what, and I have doubts on what to do if the genetic test comes back with something. Even though I believe the test will come back clean, I want to discuss this for future cases. He told me he would not be able to be with someone that would abort voluntarily, that he would just ask me to have the baby and then I can go on with my life. And he would never ask me for anything. 
So he's willing to do anything um, for his kids, even being a single parent. The only reason to abort was if my life was in danger. He comes from a Catholic family and I've always tried to be a part of it, including the Sunday trips to church. I never stated that I was pro-life in any situation. I just voiced that I don't have sympathy for people that don't take the necessary precautions. But he, um, he thought that we were on the same page, both pro-life. I guess it was my fault for not discussing this prior. I feel lost and has as if there has been a missing piece between us. I love this man. And for me, there is no scenario where I don't spend the rest of my life with him. If the baby was healthy, this discussion would have never been held. That last piece, the um, half of this um, paragraph right here says, I never stated that I was pro-life in any situation. I just voiced that I don't have sympathy for people that don't take the necessary precautions. She thought that some abortions were for those women over there, the loose and lascivious ones, the ones that are just sleeping around. That it, She had it in her mind that the women that needed this procedure were of a certain kind that she is not that she's not part of and she let this man believe that she that she was pro life she didn't broach it so now that she sees that it is for other things that sometimes women are not building babies that are complete and whole and healthy she's seeing why that um why this procedure is medically necessary because once she has this baby what kind of life would this baby have with a congenital heart issue that needs um, all kind of surgeries? What kind of life, what kind of quality of life would she be bringing this child into? They were giving it to this woman in the comment section. Um, Pelotis says, I'm, I'm really sorry you're in this situation. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Unfortunately, you can't change his point of view. He's 31 years old and presumably he's had these views all his life and he's heard the debates. Um, this person says, together 10 years and they never had this discussion. Unbelievable. And then missing both cufflinks says, let's be real. OP was fully pro-life up until the point it impacted her personally. We are seeing this happen in red states where these women are like having the, these moments of clarity because they are seeing once they do start down the pregnancy route, they are seeing that not all of these fetuses are viable. And they're seeing how these restrictive thoughts that it's those women over there, it's, it's impacting them and it's harming them. It's causing them to have jacked up bodies, they're losing their reproductive systems, all because they can't get the medical attention that they need because of these forced birthers states. Scott's thoughts says, correct. Surprised as many people aren't connecting the dots, judging others for needing some abortions for whatever reason that may be is the red flag. Exactly. She said they had the same values up until that point, that reality of what those values mean. Now she's pro-choice. This person says, tell his oldest time, rules for thee and not for me. Glad all others saw this. It was very obvious. Veggie Veggie Woo says, picked up on this instantly because it reminded me of my mom's hardcore Christian friend who would talk major sh about abortions. And then one day it turned out she was pregnant, but she had two adult children already and was too old to have more and just decided to smemort it. Laney says, the number of pro-life Christians who have some abortions is staggering. The real hypocrisy, though, is that they don't give a sh about those un unaborted babies once they're here. Exactly. The babies that make it through the birth canal, they're like, cool, you're on your own, baby. <laughs> the Acid Queen says, I'm glad you and a few others are pointing out what seemed obvious to me. Um, forever Ophelia um, honed in on no sympathy for people who don't take precautions makes it very obvious. Empathy li costs literally nothing, and some people are still too stingy to give it away. Um, Bina Tang Maria says, also, what nitwit doesn't include conversations about pregnancy scenarios with the person they have SEX with, as well as conversations about worst case medical outcomes when they choose to get pregnant among the list of precautions to take? They don't because they don't believe that they're going to have any issues. That's just how it is. These people have it in their minds that it's easy and that, you know, fertility is just going to happen. The babies are going to come out happy and healthy. 
they do not listen when us pro-choice people are talking about the medical issue side of it. Anyways, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Um, I, I think that so many more of these pro-life, I'm sorry, forced birther people, these forced birther women have to go through this, unfortunately. They're not going to just develop any sense of empathy for other women. They're not just going to develop it naturally. They have to go through it or they have to watch somebody else go through it. They're not just going to be like, you know what? Having a baby that is missing limbs or has a brain on the outside of their skull, that, that could really suck. We shouldn't make these women do this. We shouldn't make a woman be on the verge of sepsis and dying in order to give her the, this medical um, this medical option. We shouldn't. No, they have to go through it themselves. They have to have a forced hysterectomy where they can't have babies themselves anymore simply because they refuse to listen to the stories of women. Anyways, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So this girl posted in the cooking subreddit, and I know it's a girl because at the bottom she says, I'm not an adult. She says, how do, how do you deal with burnout for cooking for others? She says, I was at some point the main home cook for an absolute minimum of five people every night for a little over a year. I did all of the grocery shopping and preparations of lists and such. Holidays, I completely did it by myself for 10 plus people. Everything was made from scratch and more upscale in nature. Hours in the kitchen every night. I stopped for a bit due to stress and burnout alongside just life in general. I don't and shouldn't have to cook like this as I am very young. And there is an outrage, genuine anger and yelling at some points over it. Now I'm in a similar situation where I'm expected to cook every day and serve dinner every night for someone else. I'm just very tired. I feel like a piece of meat. And it's constant trying to please people and when you're burnt and can't do it anymore. They've gotten used to the comfort and expectation. It's painted as if I'm lazy and makes it so hard to keep up with this passion. Now, I wish that this girl would have went into more details about herself because she says that she is not an adult. So that tells us that she is a girl and she says she's very young and she's doing all the grocery shopping. She's doing all the cooking. Now, when I started clicking through her um, profile and some of the comments, I see that she's also a Christian. I really wonder where she's from culturally or what her like family of origin is like, because this is going along with the um, adultification of girls, um, where they are simply made to do adult things and making her cook like this each day with the expectation of it is just setting her up to be groomed as a as a servant. That's it. But she's already getting burnt out. She's been doing this for over a year. She's doing the holidays. She is going to just completely fail that or she is going to completely just run away because if her family is treating her like a servant, she may see just leaving as an option, which would also be terrible. This adultification of girls is something that I've seen other women talk about and why they no longer want to have kids or get married or anything because they do not want to be seen as just the servant of the family. But let's get into some of these comments. Senese Joy says, unless it is very young people that can't see over the stove yet, let them fend for themselves. When, adult, when an adult gets hungry enough, they will find food. And then the OP says, I figured this as well, but again, it falls under that weighty expectation for something new or elaborate every night. I'm more than fine with just eating a pack of tuna and some mayonnaise for dinner some nights. And the person I'm living with now would be as well, but it's just somewhat of a letdown to them, it seems because of their said now expectations, right? So now these people feel entitled to her labor. They feel entitled to the point of, um, hollering at this girl. Um, this person says, I see elsewhere you say you're a teenager, so maybe there's bad repercussions if you just say no. Is there a possible option of just buying really good food that doesn't require um, prep, like a really nice loaf of bread with an antipasto platter, platter? And then the OP says, there have been repercussions at points, yes, 
That's a potential option, but not sustainable. Typically with every meal, I have a rubric of protein, starch or carb, and veg. As an example, red wine, braised short ribs, mashed potatoes, and green bean almondine. Uh, almondine. Mind you, this is a regular weeknight meal. I could lighten the load a bit, I suppose, by minimizing the complexity in sides, but I'm quite the perfectionist and enjoy fine foods and pleasing people. <clears throat> That whole people pleasing thing will jack you up later in life when you become a people pleaser in your relationships at work. If your job is sucky, people pleasing starting very young is a setup for a jacked up adult life. Got the T says, I would be willing to but bet you're the oldest kid then, a type A personality. But here's the thing. It's a point of pride to you that you go all out to create a fancy meal for your family, yet you are saying that you're burnt out and don't, um, don't want to have to cook that way all the time. So now it's time to decide which choice is best for you. You can't have both. Are you willing to give up the control and take it down a notch, along with just admitting to your family that creating such fancy meals has worn you out? If you aren't willing to do that, then you'll just have to admit it to yourself, suck it up, and keep knocking yourself out every night to wow your diners. There's just no right or wrong answer choice here. It's just what you personally want from your life. Committed Like the Pig says, if they have expectations for something new or elaborate every night, sounds like they need to take some cooking classes and learn how to cook for themselves and you. I don't know who this person is to you, but my husband is a damn good cook and we enjoy cooking together. There's many times where one of us just doesn't have it in them um, to cook and the other takes over. When we're both burnt out, it's frozen pizza night. Exactly. You know, sometimes you have to get takeout. Sometimes you just have to just do something, grab something that's in the refrigerator that's easy. These people having these lofty expectations is what is jacked up. This this girl wants to cook for her family, but now it's like an expectation. Well, it is an expectation and this is going to just cause her to completely shut down after a while. After a while, it's just going to be like, forget it. I can't do it. Anyways, I thought that this was interesting. It goes along with the, the, the thread of talking about the adultification of girls and raising girls to be women who are basically servants of the family. So I do want you guys to jump in the comments and let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And if you made it this far, go ahead and hit the subscribe button.